Hello and welcome to What's New in Lightroom for Mobile 20, July 2017. My name is Terry White and it's my pleasure to take you through what I consider three of the most important parts of this update. It's actually three and a half, but we'll get to that in just a second. So this is Lightroom for Mobile on both iOS and Android. Cool new things. Let's go ahead and check them out. As you can see, I've got Lightroom running on my iPad right now. So basically, if we get back out, uh, I went into my Adobe folder where I keep all my great Adobe apps. I went into Lightroom and I'm already in the collection that I want to show this off in. Now, uh, I got five photos here. I'm going to show at least one uh, or two here on the iPad. And I'm going to show the other one, um, maybe one or two on the iPhone. We'll see how it goes. All right. Um, but first and foremost, what's one of those three things? A completely redesigned interface for iPad users. So if you were thinking, hey, why is the iPhone getting all the love and it's getting all the new cool stuff and look and feel? Well, you've caught up now. You're on the iPad Pro and you've got all the not only caught up to the iPhone, but in many ways surpassed it because of the additional real estate that you have on your iPad display. So for example, if I tap on this photo, what I mean by that is look at all the cool things that are exposed all in one spot. So I don't have to swipe or go to a different display or any of that to see <clears throat> the things that I use the most. So for example, I've got the image, nice front and center there. I've got the ability to see my film strip or hide my film strip. I've got my ratings, my before and after button on the left side, which we'll see in just a second, my star ratings, my pick flag, my reject, my reset, my undo, my redo. And of course, uh, on the right hand side now, three new buttons, the edit button, which is the one we're in right now, the info button, which is kind of cool, that lets you go in and change your title and your caption. And of course, uh, if you added your copyright, that will be there. And if you shared your collection or shared your image, you'll see the ability to see your comments um, and interactions that people did while you share this collection online. All right, so let's go ahead and go back to the photo, which is where we're gonna spend some time here. I've got this photo, and as you know, up until recently, Lightroom on the mobile side was really just about global changes. So for example, I could go into um, color, and if I wanted to make this photo overall more vibrant, I can do that. If I wanted to saturate it overall, I could do that. And then we added selective edits, the ability to at least do the radial filter and the graduated filter on part of the image. But today we're taking that up a notch by giving you the third and the most requested thing, and that is the adjustment brush here in Lightroom for mobile. So let me show you how that's gonna work. In the upper right corner, I've got uh, four icons there. The third icon is my selective edits. And what I want to do is I want to do a little bit more dramatic sky. So I could dehaze the whole photo, but then I would be dehazing the mountain and the road and the water and everything else, where this will give me the ability to just apply the edits to where I want them. So in the upper left corner, you got that big plus sign. We'll tap the plus. Now you get the ability to do all three. So I can do the brush radial filter or graduated filter. We're going to tap on brush. And since I'm on an iPad Pro, I'm going to go ahead and use my I, or my Apple Pencil because it's a little bit more precise than my finger. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and um, just check my brush size. or oh, this feather brush size. There we go. So we make my brush size a little bigger. And now we'll just go ahead and start brushing. So the red overlay is just showing me what I've done or what I've missed. So I love that because sometimes I miss or go over a little bit like I'm doing now. And this is showing me everywhere that I may have um, gone over or missed a spot. Now that I've done that, I'm going to switch to the eraser because I did go over. We're going to make our eraser a lot smaller so that we can do a nice job along the edge here. I'm just going to take some of that off the mountain. There we go. And of course, off the shoreline. I may have taken a little off the sky there in that one spot, but that's okay. Because I can always go and paint it back in. Okay, so let's go back one more time. And to keep in mind, this is feathered, so it's okay. I'm gonna drop that down just a little bit more in size. And that way we can just go right around that little edge there very precisely and add that back in. Okay. 
So now that I got the sky pretty much where I want it, I don't want to see the red overlay anymore. So I'm going to tap the three button, three little dots at the top right, which is the menu. And I'm going to say, you know what? Uh, I can duplicate the brush, remove the brush, or never show the red overlay. So that little diamond is letting me know that there's a selective edit there, but I'm not seeing it because I've turned off the overlay. So now I can get into what I really want, which is the effects. And I can go ahead and dehaze that sky. Uh, I can go crazy dehaze, that's crazy, and adding too much noise and grain and just, you can overdo things, don't overdo it. And I would say right about there. But here's the thing I don't like about it. It's making that one little area in the upper right corner a little little dark gray. And it's like, hey, I'm trying to make this a beautiful day and you're, you're adding a rain cloud in here. So what I can do, hit the plus sign one more time, add another brush spot, and I'm just going to brush in, pressure sensitive by the way, I'm going to brush in just this one area here. And I'm going to say, you know what, let's go ahead and go to color. And let's change the temperature of just that one spot, make it a little bluer. There we go. So now my cloud is dark, but it's not dark gray, it's getting a little blue in there. So that's the cool thing. So if I do that one more time, add another selective brush. There we go. We can then go ahead and brush the water. All right, cool. All right. And now that I got the water in there, same thing. I want to make my water a little bluer. I can go crazy on the blue in the water or just to slide them out. And I can also, at any time, turn back on my overlay to see what I have done or not done. Did I turn it back on? Yeah, I did. Okay, cool. All right, so there we go. There's my red overlay, letting me see the corners that I missed, and away we go. So now I've got three different adjustment points where I could always go back to them and adjust them further. And of course, these sync back up to Lightroom CC on the desktop for Creative Cloud members. So you can go in and fine tune and further adjust. So the big news today, number one, um, was the iPad redesign. Beautiful. Number two, selective adjustments for the brush. Number three, what's number three? Uh, let's go ahead and say done on this. Let's get out of this photo and let's go to this photo. This photo I think will show it off. Actually, you know what? That photo will show it off, but this photo shows it off better. I'm gonna zoom in on this photo a little bit. And I was in Iceland last week taking this photo um, and this actually just, you know, it just doesn't, doesn't look sharp enough for me. And one of the things that people have said is, hey, how come we can't have sharpness like we do on the desktop? So I'm going to go ahead and go to detail and you can. Now you've got sharpening and noise reduction on Lightroom for mobile. So let's go ahead and just crank. I'm going to exaggerate the sharpening just so you can see a difference. So you can see how much sharper that those rocks got. Here we zoom in so you can see it a little bit better. Sharpness there versus no sharpness looks kind of almost out of focus, but we go ahead and sharpen that up a little bit and we make that photo better. Now, of course, you also with sharpness get noise reduction. So if you've gone too far with the sharpness and you want to kind of you've added some noise or your no, image was noisy to begin with, you can apply the same level of noise reduction that you would have on Lightroom on the desktop. So sharpening and noise reduction here in Lightroom for mobile on both iOS and Android. Oh, that looks so much better. All right, so cool, I can do that as well. All right, so that's number three. Those are the three biggies. What are some bonus ones? Well, first and foremost, we've done this all on the iPad. So like I said, I'd bring up my iPhone in just a second here. Um, while I'm getting the iPhone ready, the other big news is for Android users. Android users not only get a completely new interface, they get a completely like rebuilt engine from the ground up. So if you're on, if you're on Android, Go ahead and check out Lightroom for Android as well. All right, so uh, let's go ahead and bring up the iPhone. And let's see if I can get it on the screen here. There we go. That should do it. Here comes the iPhone. And there, I've got my iPhone up on display. I'm going to put the Apple Pencil down because obviously the Apple Pencil doesn't work on an iPhone. I'm going to go into this photo. And on this photo, I'm going to um, tap on, there we go. Uh, just kind of briefly showed me what I wanted, but took me back to the uh, unedited version. And as you can see, typical window shot where you can either expose 
for the outside or the inside or shoot HDR where you get the outside and the inside. So I believe even in the case of sometimes shooting an HDR, the camera's eye is still not as good as yours. So shooting this as an HDR gave me a great outside window and gave me a little light on the inside for some things, but I want to kind of see more of that, um, more of that window on the inside of the room. So we'll, again, we got the same adjustments here. We'll go to Selective Edit down there in the lower left-hand corner. So when I tap on Selective Edit, that will bring up the same kinds of controls. Then I can go in and hit the same plus sign in the upper left corner, get the same brush. Now that I've got that brush, I get the same kinds of controls. I can go ahead and make my brush size or my feathering or my brush size. There we go. I always want to tap feathering. Make my brush size a little bit smaller. And then I can just go to town painting. Now, when I first started painting, it gave me a thick red line. But notice when I come down here and I just hold down a little bit, I'm getting a light red. That's because on a 3D touch device, like an iPhone 7, 7 Plus, 6S, 6S Plus, where you've got that forced touch or 3D touch where you can press harder on the screen, we take advantage of that for pressure sensitive brush, uh, selective brush adjustments. So if I press harder on the screen, I get a thicker brush. If I press lighter on the screen, like on that right hand side, I get a less of a brush because I didn't press as hard. So if I press harder, I get the full stroke, press less, and this is amazing. The engineers were able to take advantage of that. Okay, so now that I got this kind of brushed in the way I want, roughly, <laughs> here we go. I can, uh, of course, go to the same menu and say, you know what, don't show me the overlay again. And now I can go in and do whatever I want. I can go in and say that I want the, um, I want the, in this case, the light to change. So I'm going to tap on light to give me my light controls. And now I can, of course, adjust the exposure just in that one spot. Bring up the exposure of the inside of that window. So that's what selective adjustments are all about. I can, of course, if I missed any spots now, go back and rebrush them and they will come in with the same exposure uh, adjustments that we just made. So yeah, I missed some spots up here. Oh yeah, I missed a lot up there. All right, we'll go ahead and just brush that all in. And get a nice clean window seal. And now we have our own manually adjusted HDR image where we can go in and make adjustments after the fact, if the HDR didn't quite get it the way we wanted it, you have selective edits to finish the process. So, force touch, bonus tip, Android redesign, re-engineered, re bonus tip. And of course, recapping the three major adjustments here. Um, completely redesigned iPad interface, selective brush adjustments on both iOS and Android, and of course, um, force touch on the devices that support force touch. So the iPhones that Apple introduced that feature on, which I know for a fact are the 6S, 6S Plus, 7, 7 Plus, and maybe the 6, I can't remember. But whatever device, if your device supports 3D touch or force touch, you've got that feature now in Lightroom for mobile. So that's it, folks. Take care. Thanks for watching. And we will catch you on the next one. Go download Lightroom Mobile. It's available as of the re release of this video. And of course, I'll be um, showing this live on the uh, Lightroom Facebook page this Thursday, which would be the 20th at 1 p.m. Eastern, or I'm sorry, 1 p.m. Pacific time, 4 p.m. Eastern uh, in the United States. So facebook.com slash Lightroom, and you can check it out and ask questions. And I'll be there for at least 15 minutes showing off these new features once again. But I'll be doing it live. All right, so with that said, Take care. Thanks for watching. We'll catch you on the next one. Bye, everybody. Uh -oh.